Moving on to the sales side of things, you have the option to create your contacts, import your contact, create lists, and create eight companies on the sales side as well. The best part, the contact database is shared across both the modules. If you go to contacts on the marketing side, and if you go to the sales side and go to contacts, it would be the same list. So once you add contacts to either of the modules, they will automatically be available to you on the other side as well, meaning the contact database is shared across all the modules. The most important aspect of a sales team is to effectively manage their deal pipeline and that's exactly what we offer as part of our sales module. You could create different tracks based on the different products and services that you deal with and have different stages, which are called milestones within those tracks. You can create your custom tracks by going into the account settings and then deal tracks section. You can create a track, you just give it a name based on the product and service, this will be the sales funnel, and then these would be the different stages within that funnel. These are the default stages, but if you don't want to use any of these, you can certainly get rid of them and you can add your own stages. So let's say you want to call the first stage proposal with the probability percentage of 10. Then the color that you want to use. And then the next stage you want to call it qualified. Increase the probability to 40%. You want to choose a different color for this. You can choose to do that so you can visually identify the stages when you're on the deal pipeline. Then you want to call the third stage interested increase the probability to 70%. Choose a different color for this. You can certainly do that. And you want to add another milestone. Based on the different stages involved in your sales cycle, you can get them added as milestones. And once you're done adding all of them, you can save it. You can create a track for each of those products and services that you deal with. When you go back to the deal section, you try to create a deal it will ask you which track and milestone you want to put that deal on. Based on the track and milestone that you want to put that deal on, you can choose a track and milestone and it's going to sit in that particular track and milestone. And then when you go to the list of deals on your account, you can choose the track. It's going to show you all the deals that you have on a certain track and then you want to filter using the different filtering options that we have for deals. You can filter deals to look at deals which satisfy a certain criteria. Let me quickly go to create new to show you how you could create a deal. Alright, so here we go. Once you click on create new, you can give it a name, a description, then what track you want to put that on, what milestone you want to choose along with all the details. You want to associate a contact or a company to the deal. You can do that. Once you save, it gets saved. You can go to the track, it's going to show you all the deals that you have on different stages, and then you want to move them from one stage to another. It's as easy as drag and drop it. And then these are the different filters that we have using which you can filter your deals as well. So you want to filter based on the value of the deal, stage that they are and based on who owns it, or you want to filter them using the created date or close date. You have all the options available. We also have a list view for your deals. You can go to the list view to see all the deals that you have on your account on all the tracks. And then again, you have the option to apply a filter to filter all the deals based on the same criteria. And then all the filtered deals, you want to run a certain action on them like add a tag or delete an existing tag or maybe export them to a CSV file for reporting purposes. You want to change the ownership or execute a certain workflow or update fields. You have all those options to choose from as well. You can create deals either from the deal section or even when your sales guys are talking to a certain contact and they know that they are interested. So let's say I'm on a call with this particular contact. During the course of the conversation, we understand that, yes, they are interested in the product or service that we offer and can go ahead and certainly create a deal on the contact record itself. So you see, you can add the name, the description, choose the track based on the product and service that they are interested in, and then what stage and value associated to that. 
And based on the conversation, I can choose a tentative close date, who would be the owner, and the contact is already associated because we created a deal on the contact record and you can save it and you would be able to see that on the deal tab based on the track and milestone that you choose for the deal. Then we also offer automations as part of the sales module. So let's see how you could create an automation on the sales side. Once you click on Create Automation, it would ask you to choose a trigger again. So this time, if you notice, the triggers are going to be different to what we had on the marketing side. Once I click on Create Automation, there we go. These are all sales related triggers here. Once a deal track changes, or once a deal milestone changes, or even once a deal is created, or once somebody books an appointment with you, when a task is added, you can choose from any of these triggers to trigger an automation. So, let's say you have a multi-level sales team and all the new leads that are coming in, you want to assign them to your level 1 sales guys. But once the milestones changes to qualified, meaning once a deal is qualified, you want to assign it to the best sales guy you have. You can choose to choose the trigger as deal milestone changes. And when it changes from a certain milestone to a different one, so let's say from interested it changes to qualified, you can choose to trigger an automation. So, what is it that you want to do as part of this automation? All the qualified leads, you want to maybe assign them to the best sales guy you have, so you can go to assign owner and choose who you want to. So, let's say Andy is the best sales guy you have in your team. You can choose to assign all the qualified leads to Andy. And as a next step, you want to create a task for Andy to go ahead and call the contact. You can choose to create a task as well. We just give it a name again and then choose the kind of task description and when is it going to be due. Who would be the owner? As I'm assigning the ownership of the deal automatically to Andy, I'm going to leave it as contact or deal owner and I put it in progress. I connect them both. After the task is accomplished, you want to follow it up with another action. You can certainly choose from the different actions and conditions that we see here to automate the complete process. The actions and conditions that we saw on the marketing side same are available to you on the sales module as well. It's just the triggers that are going to be different based on how you want to trigger an automation. You would either do it from the marketing side or from the sales side based on how you want to trigger it, but the actions and conditions would still remain the same across all the modules. We've seen how we could create tasks through an automation. You could also create tasks directly on the contacts tab, just like we created a deal. So let's say I'm talking to this contact and during the course of the conversation he says, yes, I'm interested, but I'll probably want you to follow up with me maybe next week so I can let you know on my decision so I can go to tasks and then I can create a new task. Let's say I spoke to him today and he says follow up with me maybe next week. So I'm going to create a task for myself probably to follow up with him on the coming Friday, and I want to set up a reminder email to be sent to myself maybe one day prior to the event. I can choose to do that. Then I update my notes so the contact is already associated, as you can see. Then I choose the status, and once I hit save, this tag gets saved. And when I go to the task tab based on the due date, it's going to show that to me on the task section here based on when it's due. All your sales guys can go to the task tab, pick their name from the list of users and do today. It's going to show them all the tasks that are due for them on any given day. All they would need to do is knock them off to make sure they are not missing out on any of the tasks that are being assigned to them. They want to see all the tasks that are due for them in a certain week. You can choose do this week as well. And as a supervisor, you want to see all the pending tasks. You can go to Overdue and to see all the pending tasks and make sure they're not missing out on any of the tasks that are being assigned to them. We also offer an online calendar as part of the platform so all your sales guys can go to the appointment section to copy the calendar URL and maybe paste it on their email signature for your clients to be able to book appointments with them.
You can create different link for each user or group and choose what type of link it would be, like 1-1, selective or round robin. What kind of slots you want to provide for them to book from. You can create them from here. On my calendar, as you could see, I only offer a 30-minute slot, but if you want to provide them more slots to choose from, you can certainly do that. Here we go. So, I only have a 30-minute slot, because that's the only slot I have here. I want to show more slots, I can certainly create them from here. I want to create a 1-hour slot, and if I want to keep it short. I want to give them another 15-minute slot to choose from. I can create as many slots, and they would see them when they land on the calendar. They can pick the one that they want to book for. And then all your sales guys can update their business hours along with their time zone, so that only the slots that fall between these timings are available for your clients to book from. You can change your business hours along with the time zone. So, let's say you want to break your calendar on a Monday. You don't want to take appointments all day. Maybe you want to do 10.30 to 2. Then you want to take a break between 2 and 4 for other activities that you may have lined up for yourself. They can choose to come back to take appointments from maybe 4 to 7. They can choose to break the calendar accordingly for each day. And only the slots that fall between these timings will be available for your clients to book from, and then what kind of details you want to capture on the form. So, for example, somebody books an appointment on my calendar, I will ask them for their first name, last name, email, and phone number. So based on what you want to capture, you can add those fields from here. You want to remove any of these? You can certainly do that. You want to add more fields. You have the option to choose what kind of data you want to capture when somebody books an appointment. And then you want to customize the calendar like upload your company's logo, choose the buffer time between each, and then what is the message that you want to show on your calendar. On my calendar, you could see I have this message, welcome to my calendar. You want to customize this, you have the option to customize. You want to set up reminder emails to be sent to your contacts when they book an appointment. You can set up reminder emails to be sent to them. And you want to send a confirmation email, once somebody books an appointment with you, you have the option. You want to send out a confirmation email to yourself as well. When somebody books an appointment on your calendar, you have the option to do that as well. You want to customize the URL of the appointment, you can do that from here by adding a CNAME record. And then you have different reports that you could generate for your sales team performance, like the deal analysis your lost deal analysis, your sales forecast. Let me quickly go to another account where I can show you all the reports. Live account that we as a team use and one quick minute here, I load this and then if you integrate your Twilio, just call that we spoke about for SMS, we have calling feature available through those platforms as well. So if you set those up and have your team make calls from within Engage Bay, you'll be able to see all the call reports as well along with the task deviation reports based on how many tasks are being assigned on a daily basis, if they're working on all the tasks, if there's anything pending. You can also see all those reports here on the report section. Your one deal analysis based on which track you want to see the report for or for a certain user, we have all the options here your lost deal analysis, your sales forecast, and then the calls by users. You want to see all the calls that were made last week. You'd be able to see that. You want to see average call durations. There we go. Or the call outcomes, time-based calls, and then the task deviation reports. We have all the reports available for you as well. And then you want to set up an email to be sent to you. We have those options as well. You can create your custom reports based on what is that you want to see on the report. You just give it a name and then what is it that you want to see on reports? Let's say you want to see all the contacts that are being created on a daily basis. You can set up a report for that. What kind of data you want to see? You want to see the first name, the phone number, the contact owner, 
maybe the company name, and then choose when you want to get that email to you on a daily, weekly, or monthly frequency, what time, and enter your email address for you to receive that email on a daily basis.